essential parts of our individual and collective existence. Yet given how interconnected our world is, it's still very local and limited. Our use of money is restricted by geography, and we live at the mercy of our governments and their decisions. When you're in a first world economy with a government that's incentivized to look out for you, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But when you're in a region which lacks just that, it has a lot of dire consequences. And this is the predominant case in a lot of countries in Africa, with currencies that are neither sound nor global. In a lot of ways, many African currencies fail to perform the two primary functions of money. First, being a store of value, and second, a medium of exchange. Think about how many times you've been unable to pay for something with the Naira, even though you have a fully funded debit card. Or how the Naira in your bank account has lost over 160% of its value over the last 10 years. Very recently, the Central Bank of Nigeria placed a $100 limit on dollar transactions, and this left many developers within the Nigerian tech community stranded because most of them just couldn't pay for many of the services and subscriptions that they need for work, even though in theory they have the money to do so. And of course this isn't unique to developers, there are countless stories on social media of people who can't pay for their Spotify or Apple Music subscriptions, and learners losing access to online courses like Coursera and Udacity because their funded debit cards just stopped working. Beyond these personal effects, there are of course larger ripple effects, such as how weak money slows down cross-border trade and commerce as a whole. For the most part, making huge payments or accessing financial services from locations across the world is still really complicated and very expensive. Clearly, we need better money, and by extension, better financial systems that can support the truly global and borderless world that we're trying to build. We need money that is as open and free as the internet is today, and that's exactly what cryptocurrencies are. Cryptocurrency presents an opportunity to create a financial system that belongs to and is fully accessible by the people. One where Africans can receive payments for their goods and services, move millions of dollars in minutes for business, enjoy cost advantages from international suppliers, access financial services from anywhere in the world, and store their value in a currency that they can really bank on. The first step to making this possible is creating ways for people to smoothly move from their local currency to crypto, spend that crypto, and move back to their local currency if they choose to do so. And that's exactly what we're building at Bycoins. We're providing the easiest way for Africans to buy and use cryptocurrencies. And we're doing this in a few ways. So firstly, we have an exchange platform that enables people to buy and sell a range of cryptocurrencies using their local currency and in just a few minutes. Secondly, we're building a suite of products that are based on cryptocurrency, such as our latest product, Sencash, which allows Nigerians and Ghanaians to receive their local currency from anywhere in the world. And finally, we're building the infrastructure to power what we and millions of other people believe to be the future of money. In the three years since we started Bycoins, we've seen how access to financial services through crypto has impacted individuals and businesses. One of my favorite stories about this is of one of our users, Ken, and that's not his real name. So Ken lives in the US and has been sending money back home to his mom in Nigeria every month for the last few years. He previously used other non-crypto platforms and has had to deal with whatever rate the CBN sets, which is rarely in alignment with market rates, as well as other fees. This meant that his mom was getting less value for every dollar that he sent. When we launched SendCash earlier this year, he decided to try it out and has since made the switch. He purchases Bitcoin with dollars from an exchange in the US and sends that Bitcoin to a wallet address. The Bitcoin is converted to Naira by us at a rate that is decided by the markets and mirrors FX realities. And his mom gets even more Naira for dollars without having to know or care about how crypto works. He even mentioned that over time, he has been able to reduce the amount of dollars he needs to send, all the while having his mom receiving even more Naira than before. 
Another example is of Chioma, again, not her real name, one of our users who runs a food processing company in Nigeria. One of the biggest pain points for her business was with trying to send money to her suppliers in China. Now she's able to settle her suppliers within a few minutes at the best rates without any limitations. All of this possible using Bitcoin. There are many other examples of people accessing global decentralized financial services. Every day, we are reminded of the immense potential in the space and humbled by the fact that we've barely scratched the surface of what crypto will do in Africa. As the world begins to embrace cryptocurrencies, there's an opportunity for all of us across the African continent to really get in early and help shape the products and ideologies in the space. We get the chance to start from ground zero to build solutions that really meet our unique needs and problems and to build a future where we can participate in the global economy without any limitations. Thank you.